Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be talking about a pre-auth RCE vulnerability found in my little admin last year. We're going to be cover covering everything from what my little admin is, uh, the POC, the proof of concept provider, we're going to run that, we're going to take a deeper analysis to understand what actually happened, and then we are going to be creating our own payload to this exploit. This vulnerability was found by an independent security researcher and has been reported to SSD Security Disclosure. I'm happy to announce that they are the sponsor of today's video. Uh, so SSD the Secure Closure, they have the experience, the tools and the resources to quickly and responsibly disclose vulnerabilities to organizations and compensate you as the finder for it. They are mainly interested in, in operating systems, web browsers and CMSs, uh, so all that kind of stuff. And so if you find a critical vulnerability and you want to disclose it, contact SSD Secure Disclosure. Um, so yeah, you can head over to their website for way more information uh, on them, what they are looking for, what they do. Um, so check that out. And if you want more information and updates on everything that has to do with security, head over to their Twitter. And they also have a YouTube channel, which will be linked in the description uh, that you can check out uh, for more fun security related stuff. Now let's get back into the video. Um, so we are going to be discussing my little admin, and this R RCE was found in my little admin. But what is it? What is my little admin? Well, my little little admin is a web-based, a web-based um, web management tool designed for uh, Microsoft SQL servers. There haven't been any new releases since 2013 and the product seems to be discontinued. However, it is still being sold uh, on the company website and, and is uh, part of installation, optional installation of Plesk, which is a web hosting control panel. So there's still numerous active installations present, present on the internet. And here you can see some screenshots from the, the software and you can see it, it looks very dated, but it's still presently being used. And now what was found in this, in this software? Well, we can read this advisory uh, also by SSD, so they, they write advisories uh, of, of uh, vulnerabilities that were found, so if you want to read more about more vulnerabilities, check them out uh, here. But pretty much what was found was a an, uh, an pre-auth RCE. Okay, so an unauthenticated RCE vulnerability. What does that mean? Well, first of all, we have the unauthenticated part. What does that mean? We don't need to authenticate with the My Little Admin service. So we don't need credentials. Uh, and that is what makes this very dangerous because uh, this is a web interface. This is running on the web. So most likely a lot of people can access that. And if you don't need credentials to get RCE, well then everybody that can access this screen can exploit this. So that, that's what, what makes it very dangerous. But now what is RCE? Well, RCE obviously stands for Remote Code Execution. Uh, which means that remote attackers can execute arbitrary commands within the context of IIS, which is the, the web service that we're running in. Uh, so we can run commands code on this uh, on the remote. Uh, this has also been assigned a CVE, and as you can see, it has been rated a 9.8, which is a critical vulnerability. Uh, and we're going to go in a lot of depth in a second here. Um, but if I were to... Uh, summarize this vulnerability in one sentence, and this sentence is kind of going to be uh, the, this, the main line throughout this video that we're going to look into uh, and how we can uh, how we can explore this vulnerability. Uh, and the sentence is, a hard-coded machine key allows crafting of a serialized view state parameter. The serialized view state parameter is then insecurely deserialized. Now, if you don't fully understand all of this, it's, I'm going to explain every part of it in a minute, but first we are going to be looking at the proof of concept. So the proof of concept was provided in the advisory as well. So it's a little code snippet that is going to run uh, calc.exe on the uh, on the victim that we are going to be exploiting. So if I jump into uh, my machine here, my virtual machine, we'll see that my little admin is running here. So it's a website that you can use. And so this is like the main screen. So if I, if I just recent this, you'll see this is just a website. Now I have the puck here. So the exploit. And what is this exploit going to do? Well, it's first going to uh, connect to the remote server and, and, and collect some states. So it's just going to collect some fields. So that's not important. But then we're actually going to exploit it. And you can see that the exploit uh, is going to have shellcode as the view state. 
and is then just going to post those that payload to this URL. And the URL is just it's just a normal URL. So we're going to post to this connection screen that we saw earlier, and that is going to do the whole export. So let's run this, and then uh, in a second I'm going to explain everything and how this works. So uh, running this is really trivial. So we just uh, run python exploit.py, and it does everything we need. And as you can see, in the task manager, a new uh, calculator opens up. So if I end this and if I run it again, we'll see that a new calculator popped up. So okay, so that's this exploit in Python code. But uh, let's see if we can just do this via the browser because this is just a post request. We can send that using Firefox. So if I just select this shell code, uh, and then I uh, have to URL encode it. And then in Firefox, we have this post request that was sent to this form. So if we, uh, let's pull this up here so you can see. If we edit and resend that, and then we have to find the view state parameter in here. So let's see if I can quickly find that. So yep, here it is. View state parameter. Switch that around for our shellcode or our payload in this case. Send it. We'll see we get an error 500, internal server error. But if we look in our task manager, we see that Windows calculator has popped up. I'm going to end this again. Run this again so you can see that that works. So we send. And we see a new calculator has popped up. So that's the proof of concept to show you that there is a vulnerability here. And now we are going to go deeper into uh, exploring it, seeing how it actually works and what is happening here. So let's get back to my presentation here. Um, so yeah, we're back to the sentence. And the first thing that we're going to be talking about is the serialized view state. Obviously, what is this view state? Uh, what does it do? Uh, so this view state is used in ASP.NET, and that's what's running here, what my little admin is running in. And the view state contains the state of the page and all of its controls. So when a user requests a page, the view state is then used to identify which fields were modified by the user. Then when the user issues a post request to the form, the view state will be passed back as an argument to the server, and the server will uh, verify it and deserialize it. Uh, so that's pretty much the whole use of a view state. Now, obviously, the view state itself, this system isn't vulnerable itself because this is used across millions of, of applications. What makes it dangerous in this case? What makes it insecure for my little admin in, the, in, in this case? For that, we're going to have to look at a hard coded machine key. Well, the view state, uh, if you can change the view state, and the server accepts it and deserializes it, you have insecure deserialization. So ASP.NET has measures in place to ensure that that doesn't happen. What are these measures? Well, we have a machine key. The machine key contains a validation and a de decryption key, and these are used to sign and encrypt the view state, and then the server can validate the signature and make sure that it was not altered by the user. However, this machine key, this validation and decryption key, has to stay, uh, has to not be known by the world. It has to stay private because once you know the machine key, well, you can obviously tamper with the view state parameter, and then you can for we can make sure that the signature gets validated because you have those keys. So normally you don't have that machine key. Why? Because it's stored on the server and in like the web.config file or somewhere else, the machine.config file, but in this case, the web.config file. And that's on the server and you as a user don't have access to the server. However, in my little, little admin, they made the mistake of hard coding this machine key, meaning that every single instance of my little admin in the world uses the same machine key by default. And I can show that here. If I go into web.config, we can see we have this machine key here that has been hard-coded, so every single instance by default will have this machine key. So therefore, I don't need to have access to the server to read the machine key, because I already know what it will be by default. And that's how a hard-coded machine key can allow us to change the view state. Now we still have a couple of parts here. We still have the insecurely deserialized. How is the deserialization going to work? And then we have the actual crafting of our view state. But first, let's look at this insecure deserialization. 
So now that we know that theoretically we are able to craft a view state parameter uh, and we're able to forge that and, and, and have, have code in that and a, a, a payload in that, that's going to be executed. Now we need to find a place where this is deserialized. And as I explained earlier, the view state is sent over with the post request to a form and is then checked by the server and deserialized by the server. So now in my little admin, we need to find a form that is going to use the view state and deserialize it. And this can really be any form. Uh, so let's start looking for a form. And well, what would you know? The first page that you come across is a form. It's a connection form and you don't need to have any authentication to access this form. So this, is, this form is perfect for this kind of exploit. Uh, so, okay, we have found a form, because when we saw earlier in the POC, in the proof of concept, if we sent a post request to this form, we could see that we could have uh, code execution. So, perfect. That part is also handled. So, then we've come to the last part, and that is the actual crafting of our uh, view state. Now, how do you create the um, deserialization attacks? It can be very, very difficult, but luckily there is tools that we can use that can help us. So in this case, we can use whysoserial.net, which is a, a tool for generating payloads that exploit uh, insecure uh, deserialization in .NET, so in C Sharp. Um, uh, this is very, very useful. And uh, if we scroll down here, we see that they have a plugin for the view state. And also this plugin for the view state uh, is going to allow us to uh, generate a view state using known machine key parameters. So we can supply that plugin with a bunch of options and we can then uh, be able to exploit this. So let's, so let's see how we can do that. So I'm going to go, go to a command prompt here and here we can see the command. So we see we're doing yso-serial.exe with the plugin of view state. Then we do dash g, which stands for gadget, and we're using the type confuse delegate. Now, why are we using this? Uh, here you have a list of all the gadgets and we need a gadget that uses the loss formatter because that's, what being, that's what's being used in ASP.NET uh, to serialize the view state. Uh, and as we can see, the type confused delegate uses this formatter. Now, what is this gadget? What, what is it? Why, does, why do we need it? Well, obviously you can't just call shellcode anywhere, you can't just run system commands anywhere in, in C-sharp, you need to have uh, things available to you. So luckily every program has libraries loaded. Those libraries contain gadgets that we can use, things that we can use to actually uh, get execution. And normally it's very difficult to get all of that together and to make sure that you can find a way to get code execution. Uh, but luckily people have already done that. And uh, well, why so serial here is a list of all kinds of gadgets that, that you can use. So you can try uh, any that have loss formatter uh, as a formatter and see if they work. And in this case, the type confused delegate was the one that worked for me. Uh, so that's the one that I'm using. Uh, so that's kind of what gadget is. It's kind of just like you knowing which libraries are available and, and using those. And this can pretty much just be tested from trying different ones um, to find a gadget that works for you. So, okay, back to our commands. So we have the gadget. Then we're, we're going to run to run a command. Well, in this case, I want to exploit this box. So I'm going to run netcat.exe dash ecmd. So when we get a connection, run cmd.exe. And then we're going to connect to localhost 5555. Uh, and then I have a listener here. Uh, normally this IP address would obviously be another box that, you can act, uh, that you're uh, using to attack this victim. Uh, so yeah, I have a listener here. So that's what I want to connect to. Okay, so now we get to the decryption key. This is the key that we found here. So the decryption key, uh, the validation key, and the validation algorithm. So I supplied the decry decryption key, the validation algorithm, and the validation key. And then lastly, we have this uh, generator argument. This is something that is also needed. I'm not going to go into a lot of depth as to why, because that uh, has more to do with like the view state exploit uh, ID and, and that could be a whole different video in its own, but it's easy to get that one because if, if we go into inspector here, we open this ASP my, uh, ASP net hidden thing and we have this hidden uh, input here containing the view state generator uh, CA uh, OBO and we can see that that is the same 
as the one in the command here. So that's just what we're using for that, and that's needed to create this payload. So now if we run that, um, we'll see that we get this long payload that we can copy and now that we can use in our exploit. So uh, let's use burp for this. So I'm going to first of all, oh, no, it's not what I wanted to do. So let's encode this as URL and then copy all of that. Now let's get this post request into burp. So I'm going to open my proxy so that the post request will get to burp. I'll connect. Let's turn this off again, go to burp. We have the request here, send to repeater. And now we can change this view state to the one we want. Okay, so this is our payload that we just generated with YSO serial. We can send this. And we notice that we get a shell back here. So now we are, oh, we are uh, IIS at pool. So we have been able to get remote code execution, or in this case, just code execution, because I'm not remote, but it would work remotely as well on this box. So yeah, it's really as simple as that. It's, it's pretty much just understanding uh, the basics of deserialization, understanding the view state, how it works, and, and, and the fact that there was a very big misconfiguration by the developers of um, my little admin because they shouldn't have hard-coded a machine key. Now, what can you do if you have a My Little Admin instance and you want to secure yourself? Well, all you need to do is just remove this machine key and restart IIS, and then you will be secure, secured against this attack because the machine key will uh, generate uh, for you and be secure. So really, that's all you need to do. Um, you only have to know to do it, so you have to know about this. Uh, about this vulnerability. And the sad thing is that uh, this product is discontinued, but it's still used. So there's no update that has been issued yet. So this has been found, found last year and, and the, the company making this product hasn't uh, issued an update. So that, that's, that's very concerning because there's still a lot of instances out there that might be vulnerable. But that was pretty much this video. Uh, I want to thank you for watching. Today we looked at a vulnerability found in my little admin. We exploited it. Uh, we learned a lot about few states in ASP.NET and deserialization. Uh, lastly, I would like to thank SSD Security Disclo Disclosure for sponsoring this video. Uh, they uh, Obviously, this, this advisory has helped me a lot. It was created by SSD and is, is very good, very uh, all of their advisories really are, are worth reading because you can learn a lot from them and then digging deeper you can you can really get a lot of knowledge out of that. So yeah, if you want to responsibly disclose critical vulnerabilities in common applications, check out SSD disclosure, uh, secure disclosure. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you back for another video soon. Take care.